Welcome to the Midday News. I am Kayode Adebayo. Ocean State Governor Senator Ademola Adeleke has stressed the need to see the opportunities in the current economic turbulence bedeviling the country as Nigerian systems present multiple options and opportunities for those with entrepreneurial mindsets. Governor Adeleke stated this while addressing graduates of Ocean State University at the institution's 14th convocation ceremonies grand finale held at the Olagunso in Lola Auditorium main campus Ushubu, the state capital. Governor's Office correspondent Oluwa Tobiloba Odunuga has the details. The Olagunso in Lola Auditorium of the Ocean State University Ushubu main campus played host to the cream de la cream of the Nigerian society, including academia, scholars, top government functionaries, revered monarchs among others who all converged at the grand finale of the 14th convocation ceremonies of Union Oshun. In his address, Oshun State Governor Senator Ademola Adeleke, who doubled as the institution's visitor, called on the graduates to tap into opportunities in the current economic realities of Nigeria, charging them to remain focused and steadfast in all their future endeavors. The governor who had earlier commissioned the over 500 million naira state-of-the-art anatomy complex, named after the first executive governor of Oshun State, Senator Isiaka Adeleke assured the staff and students of the institution of his administration's commitment towards the welfare of all in the institution. Senator Adeleke tasked the graduates to be innovative and enterprising, assuring all that government at all levels are working hard to address the perilous state of the nation's economy. Governor Adeleke, who commended the leadership of the institution for a job well done, said the progress of the great citadel of learning can only be sustained through a peaceful and harmonious environment charging all critical stakeholders to avoid unnecessary rancor and acrimony, but instead focus on the common goal of the institution. I have noted that you also have established a no-strike, no aluta tradition. And it is this that keeps the university up when other schools are down. As a government, the place the welfare of the people at the forefront of the agenda, we have consistently ensured that we support a stand by this university to achieve the vision and mission. We understand the vital role that this institution plays in the development of our state, and we are committed to supporting it in every possible way. Our government has demonstrated serious commitment by granting bills approvals in the last one year. In their separate remarks, the Chancellor, Dr. Folon Shaw Alakija, the Pro Chancellor and Chairman of Council, Professor Wale Oladipo, and the Vice Chancellor of Union Show, Professor Odunayo Adeboye, appreciated the tremendous impact and support of the Ademola Adelike led administration in the university, who has continued to invest in quality education in Ocean State. The trial further reiterated their commitment towards achieving the mission and goals of the university while calling on other critical stakeholders to continue to support the vision of the institution founding fathers. They task the graduate to sustain hope in the time-tested reality that at times will surely pass, warning that under no circumstances should they lose hope of a better tomorrow. <laughs> Present at the occasion where the Ocean State Deputy Governor, Prince Kola Adewusi, Speaker of Ocean State House of Assembly, Honorable Adewali Ekwedu, Secretary to the Ocean State Government, Alaji Tesemi Balaye, the matriarch of the Adeleke dynasty, Yeyemo Dukba Adeleke Soni, monarchs, and notable members of the State Executive Council, among others. It has been Uluwa Tobiloba Odunuga reporting. The federal government has successfully concluded its agricultural empowerment program across six south-south states with the grand launch of the project Ein from the Soil in Delta State. 
speaking at the launch of the project, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Community Engagement South South, Honorable Gift Jumbo, said the initiative aligns with President Bola Tinobu's Renew Hope agenda, focusing on food security, agricultural growth, and economic empowerment for women. The launch follows the successful rollout of the project across rivers, Aquaibom, Cross River, Baeza Rivers, and Edo, culminating in Delta State with this with the grand occasion. Following the development, the federal government is set to fully implement the project to transform agriculture and enhance regional food security by promoting cooperative formation and commodity-based clustering. Meanwhile, a legal icon, Area Fe Babalola, has urged the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited to end its monopoly and allow Dangote refinery to sell foil at its intended lower rate to benefit Nigerians. He said this while receiving an award as the outstanding achiever of all time by the Kitikiti Coalition in the United States of America. On the issue of rising fuel prices, Afe Babalola wondered why NMPC should insist on Dagote selling, the, selling to them first before selling to the public after investing its resources to build a massive refinery. While stating that there should be no NMPC monopoly, he said anybody that invests his money to build a refinery should be allowed to sell at its rate. Speaking on the award, the legal luminary hailed the delegation for recognizing his efforts towards developing its facilities, adding that such a gesture is a testament for their love towards its achievements. In the meantime, marketers have, have expressed optimism that they will be able to lift premium motor spirit directly from Dangote refinery as scarcity of the product persists across the country. The says findings around Abuja showed most retail outlets were still without the product three months after the current shortages began. Speaking to newsmen, the public relations officer, independent marketer, independent petroleum marketers association of Nigeria, IFMA, Chief Chinedu Ukadiki, explained that the marketers were optimistic about reaching an agreement that would allow them to get supply directly from the twenty billion dollars refinery. Chief Ukadiki disclosed that a meeting has been scheduled this week between the independent marketers and officials of the refinery. He noted that pricing remains a big issue in the distribution of petrol, stressing that independent marketers have to lift the product at a price that will allow them to be competitive. While noting that 766 Naira per liter supply to major marketers is not a good price, he maintained that supply will determine price as deregulation is all about competition and the factors of demand and supply, adding that when the product is enough within the country, the price will go down. Some automobile experts have said that cars using compressed natural gas save 70% in maintenance and running expenses compared to those running on premium motor spirit. The experts, including the Director General of Nigerian Institute of Transport Technology, Mr. Bayero Farah, told newsmen in separate interviews that using CNG cars will save 70% on running expenses compared to cars that run on petrol. Speaking on the benefits of converting cars from using petrol to CNG, they noted that beyond fuel efficiency, CNG is environmentally friendly, improved engine performance and extends its longevity. According to them, there will be an extension of service duration, engine performance and emission close to international standards while using CNG cars over those that use petrol. They stated that CNG will have a stable price for a long period of time because it is not dependent on exchange rates and production challenges like the PMS and diesel, noting that the disadvantage is just the initial cost of conversion, which is very high at the moment. Now to sports. The Lagos State Football Association has achieved a monumental feat as it got its proposed budget of 3.6 billion naira for all its activities and programs for the 2024-25 season as approved by the Congress. The breakdown of the LSFA football calendar includes organizing over 19 football cup programs that will fully engage the over 10,000 active male and female footballers and officials in the new football season. This laudable football program shall support an enabling environment for businesses to thrive and promote peaceful coexistence among diverse ethnic groups in the state. In the background of the approval, the LSFA General Secretary Akim Rabi Okikio Pusu expressed his satisfaction with the approval of the budget by the Executive Board and the Congress. 
the approval of the huge budget for the football programs of the LSFA is unprecedented in the annals of the State Football Association in Nigeria. The Annual General Assembly of the LSFA, which also passed other resolutions, had in attendance respected football technocrats and many other stakeholders in the state football community. Now on the foreign scene, the United Nations General Assembly has approved a blueprint to bring the world's increasingly divided nations together to tackle 21st century challenges. These, these range from climate change and artificial intelligence to escalating conflicts and increasing inequality and poverty. The 42-page Pact for the Future challenges leaders of the 193 UN member nations to turn promises into real actions that make a difference to the lives of the world's more than 8 billion people. The pact was adopted at the opening of the two-day event themed Summit of the Future, called by UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. He said the group gathered to bring multilateralism back from the brink by adopting 56 actions on issues including eradicating poverty, mitigating climate change, achieving gender equality, promoting peace and protecting civilians, and reinvigorating the multilateral system to seize the opportunities of today and tomorrow. The pact commits what world leaders to reform the 15-member Security Council to make it more reflective of today's world and redress the historical injustice against Africa, which has no permanent seat, and to address the underrepresentation of the Asia-Pacific region and Latin America. And that ends the media news on OSDC TV. It was edited by Michael Adeni. Please join us at 3 for the state news. Good afternoon.